We are back with the Act Natural podcast with John and Courtney. Today, we are starting a new segment, a new category inside of our podcast called Good Morning Martin. Good Morning Martin Mm. is a page that we started. It's an online magazine, a blog, a Facebook account, Instagram, that allows us to brag on our small town. Um, It started two years ago um, with the premise of engaging UTM students and communications majors to empower them, to get them inside of talking about local news and bragging on Martin, Tennessee. Good Morning Martin has taken off so well. Our Facebook page is going very uh, nicely. Our engagement is, is through the roof, and we are just more than happy to be able to provide that sort of platform for businesses to be highlighted, uh, for us to talk about how much we love living in Martin, Tennessee, and now we are here talking about it on the Good Morning Martin segment of the Act Natural podcast. Here we go. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about the Soybean Festival. One of the biggest things in Martin, Tennessee that started 26 years ago. Yes, this will be number 26. Is the Soybean Festival. So what is the Soybean Festival, Courtney? Okay. It's a local town uh, festival. And it's here in Martin, Tennessee. And it's where everyone gets together, and we have basically a week of downtown events. The whole Soybean Festival usually stretches out over a couple of weeks um, with different events in town, on campus, different things like that. But it's got concerts every day, and local vendors come out, and carnies come out, and there's a festival. You can't call them carnies. We had a friend that (laughs) knew a friend that had a cousin that was... A carny, and she said they don't like to be called carnies. Oh, they right. are festival workers. That is, I am Must so Must be politically correct. No, just <laughs> Let's be festivically correct. I love that, yeah. So, yeah, it's all these different uh, vendors coming out and different rides and animals, and we've got a parade, and every little adorable cute thing that could be in the Soybean Festival is here, and it's just like a Stars Hollow event. It's a perfect town come together festival this is one of the biggest things to hit martin tennessee i love all the different food vendors that come out and line up all down lindell street right now across the street from us so we're we're in historic downtown martin tennessee broadcasting at the top part of martin coffee house right oh we are we are yeah and so we're right on lindell right the first part of lindell right when you turn at left at the light and right across the street from us is where the main stage is at Mm -hmm. for Soybean Festival. And this year we got some great acts that are coming up. Oh, yeah. For the past 26 years, of course, we've only been here um, for the past six or so. And we've been active in the Soybean Festival for the past two because that's when Mm -hmm. we got our building and we're really, um, you know, giving our services in the soybean and benefiting from all this huge event that's happening. They just now tore down the old police station Mm -hmm. Right in time. So we're talking right now, as of to date, we got 27 days. Devin, how, how many days do we got? Devin, how many days do we have to the Soybean Festival? 28. 28. Can you check that exactly? I think that's right. I thought it was 27. We got 28 days, 12 hours, and 30 minutes till soybean hits, and we are counting this down because oh, yeah. Martin Coffee House, our little our little space, our really pretty large space right across from the main stage, packed out all the time. Yeah. Love this stuff. So let's talk a little bit about um, what we got going on this year at the 26th. What's going on? Okay, so uh, we've got the Oak Ridge Boys. We've got Sticks Cover Band. We've got Runaway Jane. Or is it June? Runaway. Oh, I'm sorry. We got Runaway, June, Walker, Hayes, Beatles cover band, Eagles cover band. We got a lot of cover bands. And some of that stuff is free. Yeah, a lot of it's free. Um, the main concerts do cost a little bit, and they're yeah, not too much. Uh, they really, the city did a really great job uh, working with us this year. I think uh, they lowered down the prices on those tickets. I think it's like 15 to 25 bucks to see these shows. Like, yeah. not a big deal. And you can get all, all your tickets. Uh, you can get all your tickets at 
TennesseeSoybeanFestival.com. Yeah, the tickets range from 15 to 25. Yeah. It's a big deal. There's so much fun for I'm everybody. So excited. They got a sea lion thing jumping around. Yeah. It's going to be at the back part of Martin. We're just going to center this whole thing around Martin Coffee oh House. My goodness. No, we're not. Your junction point. Um, no, it's going to be over there in the shared parking lot behind Martin, behind Martin Coffee Martin House, House by City Hall. Where City Hall is at. Yeah, absolutely. Last year they had like a shark. This year they got a sea lion. It's really great. <laughs> There's a lot that goes on, guys. I it's mean, good this that is it wasn't the sea lion and then the shark because you'd be like, what happened to the sea lion? Like, oh, the shark. Yeah. yeah. Jokes. Hold on, hold on. Wait a second. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's over now. It's yeah, great. it was a gr it's great. Like, there's so many things that are happening. It's family friendly. If you want to pay for a concert, you can get in. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to do that, just walk around and participate in all the local vendors. Oh yeah. We have a blast. We hit. We put out all kinds of chairs and tables on the backs in front of our building. Uh, we really have. We have tons of giveaways that we do. We have different shakers, um, new drink menus, shirts, designs. Oh yeah, like what so, we're doing this yeah, year. Yeah, so many things is uh, tied into this. It's a massive deal, um, and it just this is so much fun. Yes, yeah, soybeans got a ton going on this year, and um, the parade. If you are a big parade fan, which every small town attendee should love small parades, um, but it's going to be on uh, September third at six thirty. So that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just one thing to look forward to. And the farmer's market's always going on. They got a petting zoo with like a camel, right? Gotta, ha a camel gotta have a, a camel. Zoo. Uh, and so it's going to be really, really awesome. And there's just, there's going to be a magazine with all this information in it because there's no way to keep up with everything. Yeah. So what I recommend, a couple tips, how to survive soybean, how to do soybean. How to take the most advantage of all that soybean has to offer. Exactly. Maybe. Here's the thing. Okay. Go more than once. Some people are like, yeah, we already did that. We already went to soybean on Monday. No, 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 no. Go Tuesday. Go Wednesday. Go Thursday. Go Friday. Go Saturday. Because there are things every single day and there are different events every single day in soybean. And yeah. so you need to map it out with either the events on the website or the events whenever the magazine comes out and you need to pl make a strategy all right i'm gonna hit up these food vendors and then i'm gonna go there on like college night so that you can get your they do like giveaways and stuff on college night there's faith night there's um yeah and you can go on the website to see a, a detailed list and we'll give a link on this podcast to the tennessee soybean festival website where you can like really make a map of all of that you can always stop by Martin Coffee House to get refueled through the whole time. You, oh, you get overwhelmed or confused. Just walk into our coffee shop. We will have people there to guide you. We will. We'll ha they'll be wearing soybean shirts saying, I will guide you. Uh, here's a lemonade that costs $4.50. Um, and we'll just go from there. That was a terrible joke, John. <laughs> that was terrible. Um, okay, what are we doing, John? What are we doing to help the city with soybean? What are we doing to help navigate this what are we offering so the value that we're giving to soybean uh is we're having four new drinks that are launched oh, we're gonna oh. have some new roasts that are coming out we're gonna shake it up with four new shakers absolutely uh those are like really nice refresher type drinks that have a green citrus tea base to them we have a uh, one that has a blue hibiscus blueberry hibiscus uh like base to it um, we have shirts, uh, giveaways, money giveaways, drink giveaways, cupcake giveaways. Um, our coffee house, our coffee house, Martin Coffee House, has a bakery called Lindell Street Bakery inside of it as well. And so we're just, it's just packed out all the time. We'll have seating out front and in the back. Um, I think we're gonna have some music too. Yeah, we'll have live music in there. It'll just be packed out. And and what's so great about this whole time is, is it really is a time for the community to come together. And they walk around and support all the local businesses down this whole Lindell Street track. Um, so many people from the outside come in. The majority of tickets that are sold, and I got an email about this, I think a couple of days ago, when they were asking, you know, if you're going to set up booths outside of your business. Um, I think it was from like Brad. No, yeah, Brad Thompson sent out a, an email to everybody notifying that the majority of tickets that are sold in soybean are outside of, of Mark, Tennessee. Obviously, right? Because Martin's Martin's small, so like you, it's going to draw a lot of outside crowd. That's great, but it's a big deal. Like, cause a lot of people from other states come in, yeah. um, and and visit and see, and like all of our hotels are all packed out. It's just a f really fun time. Uh, one thing that always goes back and forth, and I don't want to get too into it, but around, I think maybe Devin would have to tell me like how long ago they started building the wall. 
But I think uh, several years ago, there was a decision to say, hey, we want to get larger acts in, right? People who would bring more value, more like attraction to drawing larger number of crowds into the Tennessee Soybean Festival. Mm -hmm. And um, that caused some backlash because you think you have a free event for a city, right? You can go around, you can see everything. There's no barriers, there's no walls. And then this transition into having a wall up, but then having better quality um, like concerts. And the debate has always been this. It's always been, okay, well, you know, this is for a city, right? So why are we having a wall divide our community inside of what the whole festival is about? Is the festival, Tennessee Swimming Festival, about having a big name act and then making money and drawing that in? Is there more value to having a bigger name with more of a crowd coming in? Or does it do a disservice to uh, like the city of Martin being community minded in that way? And I have two very contrasting thoughts. I like, sometimes I think about, I'm thinking, oh, I love the wall. Like I love that it's there, it's directing traffic. It helps the people who are enjoying the concert to enjoy it even more because the seats are segmented. There's only a certain number of people that they let in, right? Because if you're gonna listen to an artist, like you wanna be able to enjoy that, right? Um, and then the other side of me is like, well, I don't know. I don't know if I really like that. Like, I feel like they would have even more value if the wall was not there because it's not about the performer even. Rather, it's about the community coming together. Like, there's a huge cook-off that happens, like a barbecue cook-off. Oh, yeah, at the Virginia Weldon Park. I like the concept of that, that it's free to all, that everyone can come in and they can purchase like at each vendor. That's just this big family gathering community spot that then um, has music. And I wonder sometimes, and I want to know your opinion on it, and we're being positive across the whole board. Listen to me when I say I prepare for soybean from year to year. We judge our whole business on that. I have pages of notes from last year's soybean. I look forward to this. This is the mark of which we judge our business and the growth of it because uh, so many you know, new impressions are coming you in. You could know? say that we start preparing for soybean in April, but in reality, we start preparing for the day soybean after, man. Like the I, day soybean ends. Yeah, I, I'm serious about that because it is a true test of our system. We'll take a pause and we'll think about the Christmas rush. Yeah. But we're doing that with soybean in mind for next year. I mean, it is it is on our minds it's amazing. 365. So, so because it's on our minds all the time, I really have, have spent a lot of time thinking about the value. Like what is the purpose of this festival? What value does it give to the community members of it? And and then the businesses that are here, because let's be honest, like if you're going to have um, a town that's charming and, and people want to be in, we're going to have merchants that are successful that can provide a, a larger service. Yeah. I mean, it's all about community. So if you've got, you know, your roads have to be blocked off sometimes right there at the beginning. Uh, to set up all the bleachers. Yeah. Up for soybean. And I mean, that's going to cut into sales for different businesses. We're one of those, but I mean, we have a back door, so we're fine. But some of those businesses don't have a back door. Or those, or the service businesses like like State Farm and Edward Jones and uh, all Vicky's uh, and then um, St. Charles, like all of those heavily rely on that like front access. Mm -hmm. and that's lock, locked off for a week. I think last year we didn't have our, our back door like marked that well. Like we didn't have a sign back there. We do now, right, right. but it did. It did cut into sales. It, they, it was rough for a, a day or two. Yeah. Until we got, we, we made a, several announcements. We're like, hey, we're here. You can still get coffee. But people were like trying to drive down and then just like turned around because they couldn't because the, cause the, the construction all that. or whatever. But what do you think about that? What do you think about like contrasting these two different things of having a wall and having larger um, artists come in, like more popular, I should say, artists, and then versus no wall, more local artist in inside of this debate, because it is a debate still. It's funny that it is a debate still. With with the, it's not gonna change. We, the city changes all the time, and and soybean evolves all the time. But this is in uh, improvement. To the is festival. it improvement? That's what I'm asking. Because I think we did a poll, and I think the majority of people We really, did a poll on this? Yeah, I did a poll on Good Morning Martin that was talking about um, should you pay for, no, not should you pay, like should there be a, a wall, something like that. I forget what I said. And a lot of people were just sort of expressed some frustration with it still being a thing that we talk about. 
and then a lot of people were quite a few people honestly were saying you know appealing to nostalgia and they're saying i remember when i was able to take my whole family and it was economical for me because there is a divide courtney and i want to be honest about that there is cost and this is a very nice cost like it's not that heavy but still you're thinking about being separated from being able to enjoy a community event and if that is the focus or if it's not what's the pros and what's the cons well okay my understanding is that the concerts cost money because one we have to pay to get certain artists in here and two it's kind of like helping the money goes back to the city or something well, it's, we it's helping, helping f- it's helping funding. fund the soybean festival, but there is not extra money left in soybean festival. Like everything that's used, everything that's made is used. And that's one thing that um, I was talking to we in the last NBA meeting that we were at, and they, they wanted some word to get out about that. You know, soybean festival is not making lots of money off of these tickets. It's not happening. Okay. Like the majority of it goes towards these artists. Mm-hmm. And if there's any left over, it's going towards like running the actual operation. Mm-hmm. They do pretty great with sponsoring. We'll be sponsoring this year. Um, I think we're going to be one of the, I forget what the sponsorship levels are, but we're, we're like a, a grower or like a bean. I forget what they call it. But we're everyone should participate mm-hmm. in doing that. And the majority of their funding comes from private sponsors or mm-hmm. corporate or business okay. sponsors. But those concerts are, you know, the tickets pay for the concert. There's not a lot left over, right? I see, okay. So inside of this kind of talk about it, like I don't know if it is progress. I think that it's different. I think that's so great that that was tried. Um, and just to sum it up, I just wanted your honest take on it without preparing to you being, I'm not even prepared you to even talk about this. Yeah, I know because I, I never want to ruffle feathers or anything. I, I just support like, if this is what the town is doing, like, this is what I'm going to support. If we have, like, any little events that happen downtown, like, I'm always there trying I'm to check out what's going on. But I just, if you want to know my honest opinion, yeah, I'd rather have, like, local artists and um, just some of the same bands that we get for, like, music in the park and stuff. Yeah, I'd rather do that and um, not have a wall. Uh, but, you know, I, I understand the wall. If yeah. I mean, if you're just asking me... I'll just tell you, but I mean, yeah. And, yeah. and it's all about supporting too. It's not like being angry about, I wish it should, should be this way. So we're not going to support, man. We are all about soybean. We open up our business late, late, late. Like on these, these nights that we'll have the big artists, we'll be open until 12 o'clock at yeah. night. We'll set out stuff. We'll sponsor, we'll pay money. We'll do everything that we can because it's all about the community. Yeah. And as the greater of soybean festival, um, we will, demand more of our staff and more of ourselves to give more and to do more. And if they want to go this thing, if they want to build like a wall twice as high and get a, a bigger stadium and just do this thing, man, I'm up for this thing. Let's do it. But I think the concept is is thinking about, you know, what your take on it is. Like, should it be free or should it not be? Should it be open to the public? Should it not be? And all that. I love open to the public. I love free. Um, you know, if we want to have more little things that you can pay to experience then you make your money doing that um but i'm all about you know smaller artists or there's so many artists who would want to come out from nashville yeah Um, and would play for like free or or low low money yeah yeah you know get your get your merch tent and your you know tip jar or whatever it would be neat to have like some of these court like i would sponsor an artist like martin coffee house would totally sponsor um, an upcoming artist or like someone like Wolf. Wolf is great. Oh, like he, yeah. he's a graduate from uh, the University of Tennessee at Martin. Yeah, we um, would make it worth Wolf's while. Yeah, he's a okay. Southern. Yeah, Matt Wolf. Southern, yeah, Matt Wolf with. Southern uh, Rock. Yeah, Southern Rock. He's so good. I like, I really a, like him. A really great, unique sound to him. He does. And he's actually really talented. And like, oh, it would be neat yeah. to see him His come. His are great too. He came out to Martin Coffee. He came out to Martin Coffee. He came out to Martin Coffee House a couple months ago. My mom was in town. I was like, "You're here on a great day," because our, our friend Matt Wolf is here and he's gonna do an acoustic set in our shop. And we did like a live um, it be Facebook neat? video of it and everything. It was he was so good. He's really good. Like it would be really neat to say, like for these artists that do cost money and they should, to say, "Okay, I'm gonna do a private." Um, business to artist sponsorship. Okay. And somehow you could work out the marketing where like he has to give you a shout out whenever you're on stage 
where this artist is presented by Martin Coffee House, and you just pay for him. You pay for the hotel. Wow. You pay for uh, food and, and then money that just goes straight to him. You really uh, promote. Did you just come up with that? I did just come up with that. You come up with your ideas when you're talking all the think time. Think about this. That's like, a really good idea. Think about growing a music culture yeah. inside of this part of West Tennessee. Think about yeah. linking people who need to pay to get in front of people and then putting that on a name that is local right there. Mm -hmm. You're growing a music culture. You're doing that in a free way for the community. There's so much value given all the way around. The way that you fund these types of festivals, the way you fund these really big things is with corporate sponsorships. Okay. And corporate sponsorships care about one thing. They care about attention. So if you're able to get in front of people to say, there's someone paying attention, I want my name attached to this good thing. What better thing is more entertaining than, than a local providing. freaking artist wow. getting up there? There's so much more value than someone like, um, and these are all great artists, I, I want to say that, but even like, you know, Styx cover band um, saying, we're so glad to be here, WKNT. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but... You know, Wolf getting up there, singing his heart out, and and really like calls in this. The he has guy's gonna sing his heart out. He is gonna sing his heart out, but it means so amazing. much more because so much of his heart is in Martin, Tennessee, well, right? Yeah, you get that. I, no, 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 I get that. I I like being. I want to give opportunity to that. I just don't want to be exclusive and say no one but an artist from Martin can hey, play here. I, well, I be one, I, I do too, but I want to talk about Tennessee. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, want to, I mean, imagine this and just I want to propose this idea. OK, Let's talk about it. Let's say we got a culture of music in this area. We start developing it. Right. We start showing appreciation to it. We get businesses to sponsor local artists. Mm -hmm. Right. Then then that we, we grow that we grow that energy. It grows a bit more. We talk about Tennessee, local Tennessee artists. Freaking Kings of Leon is Ooh. from Tennessee. Yeah. Think about the pride that these artists have in their Tennessee. That's so much of their roots, mm -hmm. so much of their experience and their music that goes into it, what inspires them. It, Drew Hol like it goes into, it's Drew Holcomb from Tennessee. Oh, yeah, Drew Holcomb and the yeah. Neighbors. Think yeah. about that, too. If you grow that culture and show the... He goes the, to Memphis a lot. Sorry. He does. Okay, no. Justin Timberlake. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Let's get Justin Timberlake. But My th dad would pee his pants oh, to gosh. drive down here and see JT. Think about value for a second, Courtney. Think about this. If you have a community that respects and honors and gives, and gives so much importance to local artistry, and then you take that to the whole state of Tennessee, I guarantee you that some of these really great big names will do it for free or for a greatly discounted rate because you know what is valuable to those artists. What? I believe it is growing a culture of, of, of respecting Tennessee and pushing back into music. And it would be amazing to see programs start up so that we can become an entertainment festival mm -hmm. around that, but not in just getting a big name, but in showing local talent and creating that culture around it. That's what I want to do. It's like, I know Valerie June is busy. Oh my gosh. But she's if amazing. she could just come back over here. Yeah. Say what? Oh yeah, she is from Humboldt. I thought she was from Memphis. She's from Humboldt. Valerie That's amazing. June. Yeah. That was so cool. Jasmine Hockett is amazing. We follow her on, on social media. We shot her sister. We, we shot Jasmine Hockett's. Yeah. To shoot Jasmine Hockett's wedding and film her wedding. And we got to hear. Yeah, it was just. I got to talk to Valerie June and I was so nervous. I was like, goodness. I just really appreciate you. Courtney, I want this. Like, I, I'm passionate about this. I know you are. I, I, I just, I, I this would be it. so amazing to have Martin, Tennessee known for, um, something in, in, around this inside okay. of music and entertainment wouldn't it be a great for the new library that's being built it's so beautiful it's right across the street from us we but, support the library but then big time but then the Join other okay. we support the library we do a uh they're passing out those we support the library flyers and everything yeah. and we do support the library exactly and so like this big thing is happening over there but there's an old library right what if that was the center Right? What if that was a performing arts center? What was that like a little indie, uh, like music venue? You know that we can make it. It's an intimate setting. It doesn't have to be huge, right? Great things can start in just garages, right? They can start in small spaces. But mm -hmm. what it takes, what it requires, is to designate that space for that to happen, and then to give respect to those artists, and mm -hmm. then to give like actual money to the. I feel like this could be something really cool. And soybean every year brings up this debate. Inside of just with me, I keep on just 
thinking about it Who's and the thinking person about you're it. you're debating too? My own self. No, me. George. <laughs> me. <laughs> my we talk about this. We talk about it all the time. And it's like, and then I think about it privately too. It's just like, what is this? Like, how can we do this? What does Martin need to become more? It's already great. It's so amazing. But what is that one special thing that Martin has? Mm-hmm. And that's not been defined yet. It's not. Like Martin is great, but what is what is it known for? Well, this could be something that it's known for. And we have an opportunity with Soybean Festival to convert it into that, right? There's so much momentum. Mm-hmm. We already have an audience. It's already here. There's a culture brewing right now, but it must have direction and if it, it must be steered in this way, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm speaking in a convincing way. This is just my idea, right? Yeah. This is something that I think would be neat. It's not something that we must do. No. But it's, uh, I get I get we, jazzed up about it. We do this a lot. John and I, one of the reasons that we started this podcast was so that we could take these conversations that we have all the time and see if anyone else is interested in them. And so we put them on a podcast and then, you know, try to make more of a synergy Yeah, and message. in long format too, because you can you can send out a little Facebook message and then people take it the wrong way or they're just like, oh, you don't support? Obviously, Obviously. we're supporting. We we're are just, open all week long. We love our town. We give money and sponsor. But why settle? Like, wh- why should we just say this is the way it's going? It's the way it's always. No, let's adapt as soybean is adapting every single year. You got your your committee that's on there. They are rock stars. Yeah, David they do Belote, a lot. rock star. He's one of my favorite people in Martin, Tennessee. David Belote. I know. We talk he is about him so a lot. cool, man. His energy, how energetic he is. He's so like intelligent. He's very mindful. He cares about soybean. He wants the best for this community. He genuinely wants the best for Martin. Man, I like he that guy. He wants to serve everyone. No, he really does. Like he's not he's an You'll honest see person. Him out there. Um, you know, Hanging Sunday, up banners. whatever. Yeah. It's like, couldn't you get someone else to do Hanging that? Up trash. And he's just out there on his golf cart and he is putting this festival together and then he is cleaning up after this festival and um i just really really appreciate his work yeah i I think he's one of the most genuine people that i know um and he really cares about like this town he's Mm -hmm. he's motivated you can tell his motive and i really like being able to see someone's motive just in their actions and he is a person whose motive is to to serve martin and i know and i've i've talked to him some about this idea a little bit like offhandedly, About the library, like the old library. No, I have not specifically mentioned that, but we've I've had a couple of conversations with him about like soybean and, and the excitement behind it, but I've not been able to. I, maybe he'll come on this podcast. Wouldn't that be cool to kind of like Dr. David Belote? Yeah, man, like just talk about he can give some updates on soybean, and I don't know. I don't want to set the stage for that. I want that to happen. Maybe we can make that happen. Um, but anyway, we're excited about soybean. I'm personally excited about soybean. Our business, our staff, the city of Martin is excited about soybean. And if you're listening to this and you are not from Martin, come to soybean. If you're thinking about visiting our shop, visit during this time. Parking is hard. Get over it. It's going to be great. Walk around. Come in the back door. um, Be be able to, like, enjoy this massive amount of celebration of this little bitty plant. This little bitty plant. <laughs> of of artistry, of all this great, amazing local it's vendors. It's so worth it. And um, speaking of people who are not from Tennessee, we've got several listeners on this podcast. We do. We got we've four got, different countries. Yeah, we've got in, um, over 20 different states. I think it's like 24, 25 states yeah. listening. And it just makes me so happy because... You know, you're like, yeah, I got a, I got some, I got some listeners over here. I got some people over here. I got some family over here. And then it's like, what? Where? What are you? New Hampshire, California? Who are these people? Yeah, it's awesome. It's really exciting. Oh, a new thing on the Anchor app, which we have, which is what we're, you know, this, broad, broadcasting on. You yes. can send us a, a voice message. I was gonna mention that. I'm glad you were. You did. That's so cool. Yeah. We're in the same wavelength here. So like, I opted into that um, just the other day. Mm-hmm. So like, you can uh, on the Anchor app if you're on it like right now you should see uh, a place to send in a voice message. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, we can answer like any questions that you have. Play your questions. We will like um, listen to them and play your recording on it and then uh, bounce off of that. So Yeah, so what you do is you go to anchor.fm and that's where the um, 
Anchor platform is located, okay? And so you can browse your favorite podcast there. You can actually create your own podcast on there if you want. Um, but it's another platform where you can listen to Act Natural with John and Courtney. And you can scroll through and you can find all of our different episodes that we've done so far. Yeah. And you can message and leave a voice recording message um, on individual episodes questions if you have them comments uh, i'd love to see that especially on some of these more popular episodes like um why i'm not a girl boss with my buddy Devin over here um if you have any opinions or thoughts or you know yeah. questions about it's that it's awesome you can go you can go on the anchor Small and we can do politics, that politics some other ones that we've had uh and that's all right there on anchor.fm yeah uh last thing to say um if you go to our website on actnaturalpodcast.com we're doing different categories this is a, a good morning martin segment so we're really excited to launch this new segment this new category uh talking about all the great things of living inside of a small town so small town usa uh this is going to be a platform for like updates on the news on martin tennessee um our takes on living here and starting a business it's all great things so uh, this has been amazing. Uh, soy Tennessee Soybean Festival, come to it. Uh, free stuff, paid stuff, all stuff. Come enjoy it. I Martin, can't Tennessee. Wait. wait, when is this happening? This is happening <laughs> September 1st. September 1st. Uh, you can go on our website. You can check it all out. You can go on the Tennessee Soybean Festival.com to figure it all out. Thank you guys for joining us again today. We will see you in the next one. Bye.